Hi everyone, it's Mrs Mystery. Today we are going to look at the work of Wassily Kandinsky, a Russian painter. This particular task has a lot of mathematical skills involved and we're using geometry to create um, a piece of work. It's a really good task for cross-curricular links with maths and it will encourage you or your child to focus on compass skills, ruler skills, using a protractor, understanding the properties of different shapes um, as well as you know producing a really fun interesting piece of artwork. The video is split up into three uh, so this part is the drawing part and then you can choose to either paint your piece of work or use dry materials like this one so coloured pencils, wax crayons, um, felted pens, things like that. So you've got you've got two options here um, and I've split the video into two because each for each one I'm showing you different skills. As ever, please do tag me in your work if you send them to me um, on my Instagram or my Facebook page, that would be really great. Use the hashtag Mrs Mystery Makes. Um, at the end of both of the other videos, uh, there will be learning tools um, and tips and differentiation strategies, you know, etc. etc. Um, so let's get started. Kandinsky was born in Russia and didn't really start painting until he was about 30. Most of his early paintings were very, very realistic, but his later paintings, which he's most famous for, are abstract. He uses lots of geometric shapes in his work. Now, it's quite a nice task for you to have a look at some of his work and try and point out and write down a list of the different shapes that he uses so you can incorporate some of those shapes into your work. So, for example, this piece here, you'll see different circles of different sizes. So you've got some medium-sized ones, a large one, some little ones. Circles as well as semicircles, segments of circles feature. Um, triangles of varying different sizes, um, isosceles triangles, scaling triangles, you've got trapezium here, lots and lots of squares. And his use of shape and line was really important for him. And he would say that his work was very symbolic, which means that it had a meaning. That each part of his work was important to, to him and to the viewer. But you, as a viewer, are invited to look at his work and decide what it means to you. And so the amount of emotion that he would put into his work was quite obvious as well. So some parts of his work were quite structured. So you've got lots of geometric lines here, like the curve and these straight lines. You've got different thicknesses of line as well. You've also got really thick lines and really kind of organic wavy lines, which counterbalance the geometric lines and different thicknesses of line. Um, and it's up to you to decide what these, if these lines mean anything to you. Particularly like this piece of work because it's really good for colour theory. Now he's used a light wash background. So the yellow will have gone down first and then he's added this kind of purpley colour around the edges. And then within the piece, you've got this structured side and this kind of crazy side here. Um, and for colour theory, it's really good because he uses lots of layers of, of shapes here. And where the colours go on top of each other, you can see where he's mixed them. So, for example, in this part here, you've got a blue square, a yellow square, and where they overlap, it's green. Um, and I think that's really interesting because that's a really a clever way of using colour and to understand colour theory, that yellow and blue, when mixed together, make green. Um, now, if you look carefully at this piece of work, I'm wondering if any of you can see a face um, or two faces. Um, and this particular piece is really good for um, figuring out layers and how to use um, layers effectively. Now, all of the, the patterns and the shapes will have been painted first and the black lines will have been done last. Now, that's definitely a principle that you need to use. Black must always go last on your piece of work. Now, if you see here, there's a nose, an eye, a head, maybe a mouth. Okay, now some people look at this and think that there's a door there. Now, could that door mean that there's an entrance into this person's brain? Also, could this be two different people? 
Um, or could this be the same person? What somebody might see on the outside and everything that's going on inside of their brain um, on the inside. You know, you you might, some people see a nose there. I had one student say that that was a nose and that was a mouth, that was the head and this was the brain kind of exploding with thoughts and creativity and colour and everything kind of going on and just this big explosion, which I thought was quite a nice idea. Um, so when you are looking at his work, um, you'll see lots of movement. And I don't mean like physical movement. I mean, when you look at this piece of work, there's so much going on and all of these different shapes could look like they move. And this is because Kandinsky was really inspired by music. Now, lots of people will listen to music when they're creating art. And this was really important to Kandinsky. And you'll see that some of these shapes are repeated, like music is, re you know, you've got beats that are repeated several times. And this whole sensation of creating lines that were symbolic and shapes and colours that have meaning and using music to invigorate all your senses um, is quite important for understanding Kandinsky's work. Um, but in terms of technique, we're going to look at how to shade um, using different tools like colour pencils and wax crayons and um, we're going to look at maybe how we can create line and um, using rulers and protractors and, and compasses and things like that um, you know and we're going to think about balance and composition and we're going to think about how we can use layers to make sure that we create a really interesting piece of work so let's run through what you're going to need a sheet of white paper pencil, a rubber, a sharpener, a compass and a protractor and a ruler. The principle is what shapes you are going to use and that's the most important part first. And there's loads and loads of different shapes that you can use. At the end of this video there is um, a shape sheet um, that you can refer to if, if you want to. Um, so you make sure that you get a whole bunch of different shapes. You're going to first draw really lightly with a pencil um, I'm going to use a compass to create a few circles first now you might want to um, use a ruler to get some particular sizes for your circles now I'm going to go with a, a radius of five centimeters so my circle will have a diameter of ten Now, if you don't have a compass, then you can find a selection of lids or you know, circular things that you can draw around to create different sizes. Remember, Kandinsky would overlap shapes as well, so you can get different colours within these different shapes. Um, I'm going to add a semicircle. Oops. I'm using the ruler to help me get it nice and flat there. Again, I've overlapped. So I've got two semicircles there. I'm going to use my ruler now and I'm going to add a few triangles. Um, so you want to aim for maybe three or four circles, about four or five triangles. Uh, 
then I'm going to add an equilateral triangle. So I'm going to go with one that's four centimeters. Maybe a right angle triangle. make that a bit longer. Uh, maybe a square. You might want to challenge yourself and go with um, some trapezium shapes. But what you should be able to do after you've done this is you should be able to recognise and describe the shapes that you've created. I think that's probably enough shape. So I've got three triangles, two squares, four circles, two semicircles, and a trapezium. Now, it's entirely up to you how many shapes you create, what different types of shape you do. I mean, in this one, I had um, a rhombus, which is quite an interesting shape. I had a couple of triangles overlapping or underneath. I had this checkerboard um, thing, which might, might be quite nice, actually. I might add that here. And I did that by... I'm just going to turn this page around. Measuring one centimeter intervals You can use your protractor to create different types of angles within some of your triangles. You could even use it at the end as a learning tool to be able to, to describe 
the different types of angles that you might have. So it's a really great tool to, to use for learning maths, shapes, angles, you know, that kind of thing. So you can be quite inventive and quite creative with it. So guys, you're at the stage where you're ready to apply colour. Now it's entirely up to you which way you go. So you could choose the dry materials um, and use wax crayons, felt pens, coloured pencils, whatever else you've got at hand. Or you could choose to use paints. Um, so select the video that you want to watch next to continue with this task.